Hey there everyone, it's JC. It's no secret that I love the Altenew Craft of Flower layering dies. I think the flower varieties are absolutely stunning, and the May 2023 Fragrant Peony release is no exception. Let's look at three creative ways to add color to these cardstock layers. This tutorial is part of the May 2023 Marvelous Monthly series video hop. There are many opportunities to win giveaway prizes just by watching my video, along with visiting my crafty friends' YouTube channels. More details on the giveaway in the description box. But anyway, back to the Craft of Flower Fragrant Peony Layering Die Set. I am eagerly awaiting my first flush of blooms to emerge this spring. I have never seen any of my peony flowers, so I'm eager to see them thrive after planting rhizomes last fall. So in anticipation of that, I wanted to effortlessly color the fragrant peony dyes with three simple techniques. All six petal die cut layers fit on one A2 cardstock panel, which I've placed on my stamp wheel sticky mat to hold the delicate petal layers in place. In order to color these peonies, I'm using the newest Red Sunset fresh dye inks to color a smooth gradient. To create two variations of the same color family, I'm making one flower set lighter than the other. Aligning the die cut layers is as easy as stacking the keyhole or arrow layers. So by leaving more white space in the arrow set of layering dies, I'll make that my lighter peony. And then for the keyhole set of petals, I'll take the darker color more toward the petal tips. But for now, I'm starting with blush and concentrating this color more toward the center of both flowers. The mini ink blending tools are perfect for adding smooth gradients on these smaller die cut cardstock pieces. Then moving down the line of color values, I'll add rouge to the flower centers, ensuring I distinguish between my arrow and keyhole layered petals. Then I'll use even less of crimson to the flower centers. Finally, I'll add velvet to further deepen the petal gradient. You can certainly let this ink dry back and assemble your flowers. However, I'm going to add floral petal details to really give the appearance of ruffled peonies. The Red Sunset alcohol markers are part of the English Country Garden set. For the fresh dye inks, I went from lightest to darkest value. I will do the opposite for my artist markers starting from velvet and coloring towards blush. For my lighter peony, I'll work from velvet to rouge, coloring subtle petal veining and folds. Then for the lighter peony, I'll omit velvet and start at crimson, progressing to blush. I think creating variations in bloom color creates more realistic card bouquets by showing flowers in different stages of maturity. And I intentionally left the negative cardstock piece in my stamp wheel so that I could add my marker strokes without compensating for the height of the cardstock. In other words, I'm not bumping my nib against the edge of the die cut cardstock. Now I can pop out the colored petal layers from my negative cardstock panel and let the ink fully dry before assembly. I also cut out the peony stamen layer from brushed gold cardstock and I'll set all of these pieces aside. In my garden, the peony foliage has already emerged. I noticed the deep veining found in the leaf, and I wanted to bring that into my Craft of Flower Fragrant Peony card. The third way I like to color my cardstock flowers is with ink marbling. The stamp wheel is great for this technique, as you can tell by the staining on my well-loved sticky mat. With the Sweet Dreams Altenew Fresh Dye inks, I'll create a marbled panel on white cardstock. I want a splotchier and saturated appearance to this panel with no white space. I'll start with Galactic Stream directly onto the sticky mat's grid and spray water from the Fine Mister water bottle until I notice the ink spots lose their shape. Then I'll bring the cardstock panel to the suspended ink and transfer the ink. 
I'll build layers of Aqualicious, Teal Cave, and Galactic Stream until my panel is covered in swirled ink. The ink will slowly level and spread, so if you're anxious that your panel looks too variegated, just give it some time and let it fully dry. I like the intense spotting as I think I'll get a much more realistic, herbaceous foliage spread. So once my panel dries with the help of a heat tool, I'll die cut as many foliage layers as I think I'll need. I like to have extra, especially since I have enough cardstock to cut more. And then back on my stamp wheel sticky mat, I'll deepen the stems and base of the leaves for some realistic bouquet shadows. Before I share the final assembly of this card, I created my sentiments from the Engraved Motifs Crafter Life Project Kit. I white heat embossed on brushed gold cardstock, the same cardstock as the stamen layers. Then I started piecing this bouquet together. I love a well-supported bouquet with tons of foliage. I think it makes the flowers pop. I added gold pearl metallic watercolor splatters around the bouquet. Then finished the card with a satin gold sequins. Those are my three tips on coloring die cut flower layers. These creative techniques work with many of the Craft Flower series of dies, not just the fragrant peony. So make sure you give it a try and share your projects with me on my socials linked over at my blog. If you're watching this video as part of the Marvelous Monthly series of Video Hop, I'd really appreciate a like and a sub if you haven't already. And make sure you interact with my Crafty Friends channels as well. Thank you so much for watching my latest card making tutorial, and I'll see you again very soon.